Hello. Uh, welcome to uh, the workshop for uh, Autofix and Transformer. I'm Srijan, and I'm going to be talking about Autofix. And this is my colleague, uh, Rahul, who's going to be talking about Transformer. So in our previous talks, we have uh, heard people talk about how uh, documentation and how style issues and uh, everything is you know, important when you write code. So over to Rahul, who's going to talk, introduce Transformers to us and uh, talk more about that. Hey, hi, everyone. Welcome to Deep Source Next. And thank you for the introduction, Srijan. Uh, such a pleasant experience to be here. Uh, so, yeah, let, I am here to talk about transformers. So let me start with the introduction. What exactly are Deep Source Transformers? So deep Source Transformers basically are tools which allow you to put code formatting on autopilot. That is to say, that you no longer have to worry about uh, running black or gofum before pushing out your code to a branch. Deep source will automatically take care of uh, take care of it. And I want to go into a little more details, but before that, I want to spend a little bit of time on why would you want to run code formatting tools at all? Why should your project adopt a, a code formatter if there isn't already one? So, uh, and I think. Uh, uh, fundamental to this is one of these tenets of programming, which I think all of us uh, do believe to be true, is that the code is read much more often than it is written. And following that, it makes sense that the developers prioritize the act of reading code above the act of writing it. But that begs, but that begs the question, how do you make code more readable? I agree that this is more of a subjective question, like you can have your own personal preference. But I think there's a lot more to the picture than just uh, subjective preference. I think that we all agree, like there are some non-controversial norms. We all agree to say that the code should always be indented. For example, you would never want to read a code which is not indented at all. So, so there are some objective truths to this. And that is, and that is how all the uh, language communities have come up with their own specific set of guidelines, which sometimes are strictly enforced, as in case of Go ecosystem, or not so strictly enforced, as in case of Python or JavaScript. Uh, but uh, other than that, what a style guide allows you to do is that you can be consistent with your code base. And being consistent is super important. I think David Chen in his book, Practical Go nailed it, and he put it better than I could ever. So he says that uh, he, when he talks about the Go ecosystem, wherein they very strictly for, uh, uh, enforce that all code should be formatted in a similar way, he says that when you format the code in a similar way, this removes the friction of learning a project specific dialect and help spot mistakes because they just look incorrect. That's awesome. You just look at code and you say, uh, that's not right. And then maybe you get a bug. So I think I have made uh, successfully made a case that running code for matters will help you make your code more readable and will help you with project uh, with context switches, especially in terms of projects hopping from one project to another. It will help you make code look more familiar and that will help you understand the code. So with that out of the way, now I think that we understand the importance of uh, running code for matters. How do we enforce this? How do we enforce this specific set of guidelines uh, which are language specific? So a traditional way of doing this has been to uh, run uh, these tools in the CI pipeline along with a, with a with an argument saying, OK, check this code. And if it doesn't uh, uh, comply with our guidelines, fail the build. And a typical workflow with this would look like a user would write some code, commit it, and push it to a branch and wait for the CI to build. The CI will build, and it, if there's a style violation, they'll fail. Okay, So then the developers will have to fish through the logs and see, oh, OK, I, made a, I had an ex extra space at line number three. And then they go back to their ID, fix it, or maybe manually run the tool through their CLI, and then commit it back, and then make all the changes and commit it back to the branch. 
and that is quite involved and i agree that there are other tools like pre commit hooks which you can integrate uh, to do this all automatically before you even commit but i think that the configuration for such tools is is a lot more involved than it should be and this is which is why we don't see them adopted as much as they should so and this is why we built transformers transformers have only one line of configuration or well, technically two but it's just one uh, thing you need to take uh, care about it's what tool do you want to use if you want to use black you just say black and that's it deep source will take care of everything for you as soon as a uh, developer writes a, uh, uh, after the developer has finished writing the code they just push it to a branch and after the commit has been pushed we deep source checks like whether or not that commit complies with the specific guidelines set by whatever code format you are using if it doesn't deep source runs that uh, tool for you say black it runs black on the code in the, on the incoming code and then it pushes the uh, pushes the results back onto the branch itself and all of this happens automatically with no uh, manual uh, user intervention so it's completely out of the way blocked out of the user and all the user has to care about is that their build will never fail because of a uh, style violation again and uh, so uh, i think like uh, uh, okay so i'm mostly done with like how this workflow would look like i think it's time for a demo maybe let me show you how can you enable the transformers on your own repositories and run code code for matters on autopilot share my screen i'll just share my screen i'm live yeah so this is a, a demo repository i have what i'll do is i'll just generate a config i went on to my deep source dashboard and i clicked on activate new repository and this repository just comes up right here i'll click on the repository and okay oops activate new repository next and i'm here i'll add a python analyzer and i'm a personal fan of black so i'll enable it and i'll say add configuration and start analysis as so a deep source automatically starts analyzing my code now i'll go back to github and I'll refresh okay so you can see that the deep source or toml got updated according to the latest changes here and this is here you can see that the deep source transformers created a check here it says transformation successful black was run and successfully transformed the code in hashtag so if i go and view this pull request it formatted all the code which i had in this repository and it created a pull request with this if i go ahead i can go ahead and merge this code and then for each and every change which i do in this repository i'll get a similar uh, for the default branch it is like i get a pull request created for the code but otherwise say i manually change a file say python i say demo python.py let me go ahead and change a file okay so I'll maybe add something so I'll, i'll add single quotes here so that black runs and converts them to a double quotes or create a branch these changes update demo python create a pull request see so see that the transformers check is running here it says that it's analyzing uh, it's transforming the code and here it is it created another commit and it fixed all the problems it it i had in my code and it automatically committed back and i didn't have to do anything i can go ahead and merge this pull request so i think uh, yeah i'll stop screen sharing i uh, oops how do i hide it yeah so i think like uh, this will help uh, you understood like how to enable transformers on your repository and you'll put code formatting on autopilot from here onwards over to you sujit yeah so uh, thank you for the demo rahul uh, so i think when the code is formatted uh, automatically there's less friction between you know uh, any 
project which which has this mandatory checks on ci that hey your code should adhere to that this convention there's less back and forth and code is uh, like uh, it's it's done swift and uh, very nicely so okay so as we have seen like to use transformer you require a configuration file where it is basically the name of transformer uh, that you want to use right so uh, deep source when deep source started it it was just you know detecting issues in your code it was detecting issues like code spells, performance issues, security issues, uh, anti-patterns, bug risk, uh, issues like these. So uh, when we looked at these issues, we realized, hey, there are a lot of issues here which can, you know, which can be fixed effortlessly. For example, uh, from the top of my head, if we talk about Python code, there are unused module, unused imports in your code, right? So those doesn't require uh, much of an effort uh, to fix in your code. You just have to visit the uh, file and you just have to delete the unused imports right but we noticed that people uh, they rarely you know actively they did not fix these issues actively because uh, they were in a huge number there were a huge occurrence of such issues in the code and uh, this was not basically a, a, a something which is breaking your code right so uh, they deprioritize it. So then we thought, hey, why don't we have something which you, which can automatically uh, fix these issues? And that's how the concept of autofix was born. So for autofix, you don't require any configuration at all. So as soon as Deep Source detects an issue, and if we are able to fix an issue, we show you an option. Hey, you can go ahead and automatically fix this issue. And it's just like the transformer workflow. Since transformer works in auto, uh, like autopilot mode, there's no user interaction at all because uh, the tools Black and uh, ISOT and Autopipate, these are like they have pretty straightforward uh, fixes which adhere to a convention. For example, in Python, it's Pepit guidelines, and in a community like JavaScript, since there is no like a rigid convention, styling convention, there are different conventions. So uh, tools like uh, st uh, Formatters for JavaScripts are famous. So for auto fix, uh, the, there was a second point that hey, users might want to fix some issues and might not to fix uh, might might not want to fix some other issues. So uh, here in auto fix, you just have to you know select the issue you want to auto fix, and Deep Source does that for you. So I'll just go ahead and display how auto fix looks like. So this is the same repo that Rahul was using. So uh, when you go here, you see the deep source dashboard and all the issues that were rep uh, reported. So if I go to some issue, uh, let me just click on all issues here. And uh, for example, let me just see this issue. It says uh, you can just merge the as instance calls here. So there are two uh, the, in, in this if statement. There are uh, there are two as instance calls. So basically, I am checking the type of changed files. If it is tuple or list, do something. We are doing some operation. So what Deep Source tells me is I can uh, let me just decrease the font size so that I can show your description. So what Deep Source tells me is I can do it like this. You can have just one as instance call, and both the types can be you know much given passed as a second argument as a tuple. So Issues like these. So these are very straightforward to auto fix. So when you go to a deep source dash, the deep source dashboard, and when you scroll through the issues, you will see there are an there is an option to auto fix uh, with the issue. So some of uh, some issues have these option and some uh, some doesn't have these options at, uh, at the moment. So the issues that deep source is able to auto fix, we show this uh, that you can go ahead and you can auto fix this issue uh, right ahead. So uh, this let me go to the same occurrence. So when I click on auto fix, it will show me all the files for which this issue was raised. So if it were here, it is raised in only one file. If it was in more than one file, you can go ahead and select and deselect all the files in which you want to, you know, prioritize fixing these issues. So when I run out of fix in this file, DeepSys is gonna take some time and generate fixes here. And just wait for it to fix. And when the fix is generated, uh, we get humps of the uh, of of the changes deep source made. So this was changed into this, and this was changed into this one. So here as well, we provide you an option to choose which one to which one you want to send in your pull request. So which one you want deep source to fix. So uh, I can go ahead and select uh, either of this as well. So let me just go and uh, 
let me just select all these two, right? So when I create pull request, Deep Source is going to create a pull request uh, fixing that issue. Uh, I need to switch the screens. OK. Right. And uh, Deep Source created this fix for me. Uh, the same uh, hung that we saw, it just went ahead and created this fix for me. So this was one of the use cases where you can go ahead in your issues tab and you can uh, see all these issues which were fixable and you auto fix it from there. In a new UI, we also have a filter from which we can filter all the issues that are auto fixable. So if I go to all issues here and if I filter by all the issues that are auto fixable, you will see all the issues here that DeepSource has auto fixes for. So you can go ahead and choose what issues to fix from here as well. Now. When we implemented this, then we thought, uh, okay, now we can auto fix issues. But developers, they uh, in, in an existing pro uh, product, uh, in an existing project, they send pull requests. And when they have pull requests, they there may be more than one issues uh, in in the pull request which can be you know auto fixed. So uh, for example, let's, let me just I have one run in history when I was adding these issues. So if you see this run. So in, in the Go analyzer, there are like uh, there are six issues that can be out of in six files. And there are uh, in Python analyzer, there are 10 issues that can be out of in 10 files. So uh, when Deep Source checks this and when Deep Source raises these errors, so uh, before even going through the issues, uh, you can go ahead and auto fix it. And here, uh, you uh, since there are different issues here, all the issues that were raised in this PR uh, are going to be shown here. And you can select and deselect what issues to auto fix. So these are issues that you can select and deselect to auto fix or not. And then when you run auto fix on a file, it's going to take some time and generate auto fix for all the uh, changes, all the issues that were uh, fixable in your pull request. And when it is done, just wait for it. Yeah. And when it is done, it's going to fix all the issues it encountered, all the six occurrences, uh, seven occurrences, and six issues that were uh, seen across uh, six files. You get to see a similar patch for all these occurrences. And you can, again, select and deselect what, whatever uh, you want to uh, add. So the major difference between these two workflows is when you fix an issue from your issues tab, it's going to create a new pull request. But in the whole in this uh, in this whole pull request workflow where more than one issues were raised, you it deep source directly commits to the pull request. So uh, after you commit to the pull request, and if I view the pull request, so if I see this commit. It makes all the changes and adds it, add it as a different commit. So that's how the pull request workflow looks like. So that would pretty much cover autofix. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll be taking questions uh, if you guys have any. We actually got a question from the audience saying, OK, uh, I'll repeat the question here. What's the main advantage of using transformers instead of a pre-commit hook? Once the pre-commit hook is set up, having pre-commit hooks makes sure that Git blames are not filled with auto-format commits. Yeah, that is an excellent question, actually. So first of all, as I mentioned already, that setting up a pre-commit hook is uh, takes in some amount of configuration, so you you can save that amount uh, that that much time, uh, and you can instead do something else. Yeah. And also, uh, Git uh, Git pre-commit hooks also have to be configured for each and every one who forces your repo or, or all the contributors. And deep source transformers will automatically take care of everyone who is contributing to your project. So if a team, an entire team of people is working on something, they don't need to worry about uh, running pre-commit hooks on their own. Uh, they can just rely on transformers fixing it. The question of having the auto format commit blames yeah, that is some that is a pain point for transformers right now. But uh, I'm pretty happy to announce that this is something we are going to fix in our next release, and is automatically planned. So, 
I think that answers your question. Okay. Uh, I, oh, I have okay. another question for you, I think, from the audience. Yeah. Fazil asks, how does Deep Source deals with autofix of, auto of issues which may require contradictory fix? I think what they mean is like, what if one issue can be fixed in multiple ways? And like, what, what does Deep Source do in that case? OK, so Faisal, uh, uh, right now, uh, majority of the issues that Deep Source fixes are you know, straightforward issues that have exactly one way of fixing it. For example, uh, the issue I just uh, demoed, right? Uh, consider merging is instance. There was just one way of fixing it. Unused imports, there's just, there's just one way of fixing it. Just remove the import. Uh, there are also other issues, for example, uh, assert used outside of test files. Uh, that's a security issue. We have a dedicated blog post for that. Uh, so I'm not going to get into details of why that is a bad pattern. But issues like this, right? Uh, the, I think that is one contradictory fix that I have come across. And uh, we have heard from many developers that, hey, this fix doesn't make sense all the time. So what DeepSource does is, so uh, you have uh, assert something which is uh, uh, like basically asserting something uh, uh, in the code, right? So, and in deep source, if you run, uh, and in Python, if you run it optimized mode, uh, the it, uh, while compiling the bytecode, it's going to remove all the assert statements from there. So that's why, uh, as when deep source fixes this, it changes that assert statement into a if statement and checks the same condition as a part of if statement. And if that uh, condition doesn't, you know, is not uh, met then deep source replace that with a raise assertion error. Now, the contradiction here is why are we raising assertion error? We can raise like type error or value error, which makes more sense. Now, the reason behind doing this was because to keep the uh, existing behavior consistent, you know, because maybe somewhere uh, people might be catching this uh, assertion, assertion error and handling things, which is rare, but still, uh, to keep for the sake of consistency, we did that. And uh, yeah, so for issues that may have more than one fix, more than one way of fixing it, I am happy to announce that this is something which we are going to do in uh, uh, in the coming time. And this is in our roadmap. DeepSource is going to fix issues which have more than one fix. And it's going to give user an option since you get to see an option that this is going to be replaced by this. So we are going to give user an option which fix do they want to select. So in those things, in the contrary fixes, uh, they are going to see, OK, which use case looks the best for my uh, for my issue. And they're going to uh, and they can choose that uh, that hunk and they can apply it. So I think that answers Fasil's question. Yeah. Thank you, Srishan. OK. Uh, uh, Rahul, uh, since uh, you were talking about uh, uh, Black and ISOT, right? So uh, I have been writing Python for quite some time. And uh, I have noticed that there are few issues that you know that, that are contradictory with Black and ISOT. So, I saw it changes something, and when I run black, it changes something back. So, when I uh, you know enable both black and I saw, then how is gonna deep source uh, uh, behave in that case? In that case, uh, there are actually different modes in which I saw it can be operated. Black is actually not at all configurable. I mean, there are very few things which you can change, very few knobs that it provides, but I saw it is. I, I sort has many modes, and I think like uh, the one way Deep Source handles all of these is that it stabilizes all the outputs. So if you have say uh, five or six code formatters enabled for any repository, say you have YAPF, Black, I sort, so Deep Source will try to stabilize the code output by running all of them, and this is. Uh, uh, this is uh, we have gen uh, we have determined the order in which they should be run, ideally to get a stabilized input, uh, a stabilized output. And once they are run, Deep Source will complain if these if the output cannot be stabilized at all, which is possible in some cases where, say, Black will undo the changes I sort does, and then I sort will do it back again. So in that case, we cannot do anything, and in that case, we will we'll report an error. But in most cases, the output can be stabilized, and DeepSource automatically take care of doing that. And 
under the hood and user need not worry about that and they can just rely on the transformers and that will work out of the box automatically got it yeah. uh okay and uh i would also like to uh let you guys know that as uh, in the coming time we are going to add support for more languages so right now we have uh, primary support, uh, transformer support for all the primary languages that we analyze. And uh, in coming time, we are going to uh, add transformers for other things as well. We are going to add transformer for shell and we are going to add transform for other languages that we are going to support. So, yeah. Yep. In addition to the transformers we already have, that is Black, Yapa, PySort for Python, GoFum for Go, Standard RB for Ruby, Standard for JavaScript, and prettier for JavaScript. I guess that's it. This was great talking to you all. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Have a good day.